Hi there, here we are for the next in the series of interviews celebrating 10 years of synesthesia. Today's theme is mobile and I'm joined by Chief Developer Advocate for Google, Chet Haas. Chet, hi, how are you today? I'm doing great, how are you? Yeah, I'm very good, thank you very much. Thank you so much for being able to join us from, you're sure. in sunny California, right? I wouldn't know, I've been in the house for the last 14 months. Good point. Good point. <laughs> it looks pretty sunny though, where you are, or very, or very good lighting. One of yeah. the two. <laughs> Excellent. Well, look, thank you so much for being able to, to speak with me today. You and I have met in the past at some of our DroidCoin events. It's always been a pleasure to work with you, and I'm really looking forward to your insights today. Excellent. Yeah. No, very happy to join you. The one, one of the weird things about the situation we've been in for, I think, forever, uh, now for the past year is um, that we're all doing this online thing. On one hand, it's unfortunate we can't get together in person like we did at a couple of uh, DroidCon Italy's in the past. On the other hand, the fact that we can have this conversation and more conversations like it because everybody is more and more connected online is actually kind of a nice benefit to the otherwise horrible situation that we're in. I couldn't agree with you more. I really couldn't. I think, you know, looking at the, the pros and cons of the situation is, is always the right thing to do. I couldn't agree with you more. You and I are here today to talk about mobile in general, and specifically, and specifically the future of mobile. I want to kick off by asking you how your role as a developer advocate has changed, please. Uh, sure. So I'll rewind a bit and say I've actually been doing this kind of role um, no matter what my actual paid job was for about 20 years now. I started doing tech talks when I was at a previous company, which is at Sun Microsystems about 20 years ago. And then I realized, hey, this is a really fun thing to do to write the technology and then go out and talk to developers about how the technology works. Um, so I've definitely seen evolution in that, not only in the platforms I worked on and technology itself, but uh, developer advocacy and, and software overall. I think the, the biggest change is that things just keep getting bigger and more complicated. There's more technology all the time. There's more form factors. There's more types of technology. When I started doing this, mobile, at least smartphones, didn't exist. And so this entire industry that we're in just wasn't even a glimmer in anyone's eye, right? You could sort of, I guess you could sort of see the nascent beginnings of that, but certainly not at the scale that we have now. Uh, but the thing that hasn't changed, the, the one constant is, I believe very strongly that developer advocates aren't just people that you know get up on stage or write an article and talk about this stuff. Like That is like an implementation, a small implementation detail of the job. The actual job is to be an engineer, right? to actually understand deeply what is going on in the platform that you are then going to talk to developers about. And as long as you are that, as long as you are an engineer who is passionate about the software that you work on and can understand it at that deep level, that hasn't changed at all. So. You write the code, you understand the code, and then you go out and you talk to people about how things work and about what they need from that platform. I, I would add though that there has been a fairly large change just in the last year because of this horrible situation that we're in right now where we lock down. Well, you know, for developer advocates, part of the job is to go out and talk to developers at events like DroidCon Italy, meet them in person, find out what the issues are, help everybody understand sort of the, you know, the networking aspect of things. Um, that involves travel and that involves meeting people. And those two things shut down really hard over a year ago, which means we pivoted to this weird online thing that we're doing now. And that has been an interesting shift to do more and more video content as well as online uh, engagement, online conferences, which it is amazing, as I was saying before, it's really good that we can do this. On the other hand, I don't think we've quite figured out how to get to the, the level of personal engagement that we could uh, in in-person events. So we still have a bit of work to do there. Although frankly, I'm hoping that we can just get back to in-person events and then use a hybrid model where we're able to do all of this. I, again, I really agree with you, and um, I think how how you just segued from the you know the global situation to answering the question and back to the global situation. I, I agree with what you've just said. I wanted to ask you actually how, in your opinion, the role of a developer has changed. And you touched on that already that you don't think it's changed too much. But is there anything else you want to add? to that piece, aside from the remote working and how that's changed in the last year, you know, there's been a lot of changes in technology. How's that impacted the developer role? I, 
I think, again, you know, rewinding, uh, look at the color of my hair and imagine how long I've been doing this. Um, I think that things are just getting more, not necessarily more complex, but there are more opportunities. There's more technologies and there are more tools that you can use. There's more languages that you can use. There's more approaches that you can use. There's more platforms that you can program for. And to some extent, it is beholden upon us to understand a lot of that stuff at at least a level where we can make a decision of what the right thing is for us to do. If you rewind back a, a couple, three decades, then maybe you could focus on a thing and you could you know, dive down that pigeonhole and you could just be the expert in that thing for as long as you wanted to. And I don't really think that's to your advantage anymore because that thing could go away, right? Like the, the fads and technology um, can be incredibly quick. Uh, and then a new thing comes out. And if you have no idea what's going on there, you're going to have to spin up on it really quickly. And so I think um, the the main thing you want to do as a developer is to develop the develop um, to learn that the fundamental skills that you need as a developer so that you can spin up quickly on a new language, a new approach, a new way of programming, uh, new tools so that you're facile in, in adopting these new technologies and deciding what it is that is going to work for you and your company and your product. And then you can shift very easily into these new things as they come online. OK, that, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, like you said, there's a the market has evolved and become more complex and you know, there's a lot more to it in general. Um, I'm reading between the lines. It's a little bit more interesting as well, actually, you know, with that, those swift changes and all of those new things that are, that are, um, are there to play with and investigate. Just on that curiosity piece um, and, and, and things that you've just touched on there, I would really like to know. <laughs> Are there, can you tell me some of your, looking back at all of that history, can you tell me some of your favorite handsets that you've worked with or some of your favorite apps that you've seen? What for you have been some of the real highlights, um, you know, in, in, in the work that you've done? Sure. Uh, my favorite handset has to be the Nexus One. And I, there are a couple of reasons for that. First, it was my first smartphone. I basically wasn't in the smartphone space until I joined the Android team in mid 2010. I'm far too frugal to have uh, opted into it before then. And I joined the team and I started playing around with devices. I got a few of them and then the Nexus one um, was there and it was a lovely device. It fit really well in the hand. It had all these amazing capabilities in it. Um, it was fast for its time. It had all this power and the screen was huge, which is ridiculous. Now, if you go back and look at a Nexus one, it's this tiny little thing, but screens keep getting bigger and we keep sort of forgetting in our, in our memory what things used to be like. To me, that screen is huge, um, but of course it doesn't compare to the displays that we have now. As far as apps, um, I would say calendar, and it's because uh, I tend to be a bit absent-minded, and for years and years in my career, I would have meetings I was supposed to show up to, um, and I would have them written down on you know, a calendar, maybe a piece of paper, you know, way back when, when we used Parchment and Quill. Um, but then I, I, you know, I'd have an online thing, I'd have something on my PC and I'd keep track of these things or I had a Palm Pilot, but I didn't necessarily have the data where I needed it at the time when I needed to find out. And so I'd constantly miss meetings because I wasn't notified, I wasn't reminded to do this thing and my brain wasn't working well enough to know about that. And the fact that smartphones could start connecting all of these important pieces of information in our lives so that someone could create an event for me in their calendar and then it gets sent to a server and that server sends the information to my phone and my phone notifies me from my pocket means that now uh, instead of missing a meeting because I didn't know about it, I can just miss a meeting because I didn't feel like going to it instead. I mean, I think that that example, especially coming from someone with your experience, your, you know, your, level, your, your deep level of technology, technological experience, that example of you know, technology answering a problem um, is, is really important, I think, in this, you know, that's where, that's where technology makes a difference, isn't it? Is where, where there's a problem and, and technology provides a solution. And, you know, with that kind of sound bite in mind, one of the phrases that we see around a lot is think mobile. We see it in marketing, we see it in slogans, we see it in the industry. And I wanted to ask you, what, what would that mean to you? What does think mobile mean in the present for you? It, it means it, it goes exactly back to that calendar example and, and so many more like it where we connect the services and the information and um, the devices in your life where <clears throat> now it's all around us and 
uh, we can have that information wherever we happen to be. So it used to be, um, especially, you know, when I would do developer advocacy stuff back in the day that, you know, travel is a big part of it. So you get all your details together because I need to know, okay, what is my flight? And then what is my connecting flight? And where am I landing? And where's the airport? And where's the hotel? And how am I getting from there to there? How does public transport work? Where is the, the venue? Who are the people that I need? Like all of these details. And, and you get all stressed out about pulling this stuff together so that, you know, when you actually get to the airport, you make sure that you have all those things with you that you're going to need on the other side. And now you go to the airport and you get on a plane and you land and you pick up your phone and you say, okay, what's all the information that I need, right? It has the information about the hotel. I can look up the map information and find out where I am and how to get there, the public transport. I know, you know, I've got emails with information about the venue and the people that I need to connect with. Do you really think that that is a better reality? The, the reason I'm asking is that yeah, I, I cover my grey hairs, so, so you, you can't see. But I remember a time travelling, arriving in that new place and having to rely on a book that was maybe printed five years ago to find a hotel, um, a map that probably my dad found in a library for me to use, um, having, you know, walking down streets, conversing with people in a language that I knew nothing about um, and trying to find that new place and then maybe going to some sort of tourist office to find the key things to see in that city. Like, so different to the reality you just described. Um, back to my first question, like, do you, do you think that, that the now reality, the ping, it's all there in the palm of my hand, is, is that a better reality? Boy, it, it really does make my answer seem kind of trite, doesn't it? Um, I mean, there's a couple of approaches. I, I really do like the idyllic picture that you painted of, you know, I've had the same experience um, traveling a bunch throughout the world, not necessarily with business, but I would maybe um, draw a line between business things that you need to do where like, I need to make this thing happen. And it's nice if it can happen as efficiently as possible without me, you know, pulling together these details or, you know, landing and not knowing what's going on versus life where, yeah, frankly, it's nice to land in a city and then you sort of figure it out from there and you have conversations with people. Um, so the, the example I was painting was more on the work side where it's like, I just need to do this thing. Um, as opposed to, you know, when you're actually trying to enjoy life, then maybe relaxing a bit and, and smelling the roses on the curbside as you're walking around is, is maybe a little bit more important. I should also point out though, that I'm an engineer and that we don't get into this domain because of our people skills. So the ability for us to actually hide in our phones is a, is a huge advantage to many of us. The Thinking about that then, what do you think at the moment are the current opportunities in mobile at large? Maybe, maybe what you want to see is a, um, you know, the next version of calendar. I don't know. <laughs> but what for you are, are the opportunities at the moment? I, I think I can only answer that from my personal experience and, and domain knowledge, uh, because I always think about the software. Of course, there's, you know, other opportunities in carrier spaces and hardware and like all over. Um, the, the domain of, of mobile. But um, for me, it's always about the software because I think of software as being, as providing infinite possibilities. I think, you know, anything is possible with software that you write. It, you just need the time to code it up. You just need the ideas for it and the time to actually write the code to make it work. It's kind of amazing the things that we can do. Once you have those connected elements that we were talking about before, where you've got the data out there, you've got these services that can provide it, you've got all these things that you can plug together. You have this you know, growing capability and power of these phones with the CPUs and the GPUs and these amazing displays and these other connected devices. Like, what can we do with all of that? We just need more time to write the code to actually make it happen. So I, I look forward to like more and more amazing things happening all the time. I don't know what they're going to be, but they're going to be amazing.